Hello, everyone. I'm Colleen Vanderzyden, and this is Creating an Inspired Life. And we are going to talk about a great topic tonight. It's all about accepting change. But before I get to that, I do want to mention that it is time for you, if you have not done it yet, to decide that you want to have the most awesome life you can possibly have. And it's all up to you to decide you want to do that. All you have to do is make a choice. Keep your mind open and see what happens. I'm a life coach and I help people with those kinds of things all of the time. And I'm a medium as well and connecting with our loved ones on the other side. Today's coaching tip is about accepting change. Have you noticed that whenever a change comes up, something happens that we tend to resist it? Almost all of us do this. We tend to resist what's happening. We get uncomfortable with a change. My daughter, Laura, and I did talk about her last week. I'm going to talk about her again. She's home from school right now. She's here from graduate school. And we've been having some interesting conversations. So we'll just, you know, use her as an example for a little bit here. But she is somebody who has a hard time with change. She's attached to things being the same. She likes to know what's going to happen, how she's going to get there. She likes that feeling of control. And she likes to know um, all of the details. Uh, She doesn't like things to be uncertain. Aren't we so like that all over the place? So many of us are like this. We want to know what's going to happen and how we're going to get there. Since she's been in graduate school, since August, it's been a little bit of a challenge for her because it's a big change going to graduate school, number one. But she's also been working in one of the offices there. And her boss doesn't always give her specific directions. And Laura likes specific directions. So her boss will tell her she's in charge of something. It could be an event or something that has been happening every year for many years at this college. She'll be in charge of it, but Laura's never been to it. So she doesn't know what it's about. She doesn't know how to do anything. And her boss doesn't really give her much of a plan for getting there. So it's been a little bit of a struggle with this for Laura. She's been very uncomfortable with some of that. The job has been very uncertain for her and she's unsure of those expectations. So doesn't know how to get where she's supposed to get. So to make matters worse, just the other day, she got an email from her boss that said the boss is now leaving in a few weeks and going to a different school. Now, wouldn't you think Laura would say, oh, good. Now, maybe this will be better. I'll get a new boss, somebody who will be there and show me what I need to do and tell me what I need to do. But no, she got upset because she didn't know who it could possibly be, who would know uh, what is supposed to be done, who would know how to get there. So it was too much uncertainty for her, too many unknowns. And she was definitely resisting this change. In her mind, it was safer to stay in what she knew than it was to look at the change as a possible opportunity that might shift how she was experiencing this situation. How many times do we stay in something, uh, whatever kind of situation, because we're afraid of the change? We might stay in an unhealthy relationship too long because we don't know what's going to happen if we end it. We're uncertain about what the outcomes would be. Maybe we stay at a job, even though we know there are better opportunities out there, but it's just too stressful and we're too scared of the change to take action. We would rather stay with what we know because it's safer than move into any kind of uncertainty, any kind of change. We want life to be easy, and that's in quotes. (laughs) We want it to be easy. So we become attached to maybe people. We become attached to certain situations. We could become attached to objects, of course, things like that. We can become attached to beliefs. We hold on to things because they're familiar to us. They give us a sense of safety. Our life feels comfortable when we're attached to things, even if we're not particularly happy. We prefer to know, uh, we prefer what we know rather than moving into that change and uncertainty. But what we need to do is change our mindset about change. We need to change that, our thought patterns, how we're thinking, and realize that when something does change, it is probably going to be for the better. It may not be immediately, but in the long run, it probably will be because you'll be learning more about yourself and all of those things. Everything changes in life. Nothing stays the same. Have you noticed this? Now, just knowing that is amazing in itself, isn't it? Relationships will change. They'll come and they'll go. Friends, romantic relationships, even family relationships will change. Uh, Jobs will shift. Uh, People will leave for various reasons. Houses will get sold. Situations will change all sorts of things. All of these things 
bring up, it's almost a natural reaction for us to all of a sudden just feel very uncertain and almost scared about what's going to happen. So we move naturally into resisting the change. I have a friend who was in an unbalanced and really unhealthy relationship. Everything she did was for him uh, to make his life easier. She was at his house all the time, helping him with things there. She was helping him with some of the problems he was having with his job, helping him with some of the health concerns he was experiencing. And he was taking advantage, really, of her kindness and her loyalty, which there were moments where she questioned whether or not this was a good relationship because it was really kind of one-sided. She was the one doing most of the work and he was the one just receiving everything. And even though there had been times when she felt she needed to end the relationship, um, she thought, no, you know, it's okay. I'm safe here. It's comfortable um, because she knew what to expect. But then one day what happens? He does end the relationship and she resisted that. She kept wishing for it to be the way it used to be. And she would have preferred to stay in that unhealthy relationship than um, deal with the feelings of the unknown. Eventually, she realized it was healthier for her to honor her own needs instead of putting him first all the time. And now she said the change is the best thing that ever happened to her. She's happier than she's ever been. My daughter is attached to those feelings of safety. She, for her, uncertainty and change are very disconcerting and they threaten that feeling of safety. She told me she's now working on being more flexible. And uh, since she recognized she can't control the situation, she kind of has to just go with the flow and accept that the change is there and kind of look at it as positively as she can. If you're resisting a change because you're scared of the unknown, just remember nothing is permanent. Everything is going to change. As much as we try to keep things the same, they never stay the same. It will always change. As soon as you get comfortable, something will happen and it will change. Just knowing that there is no permanence in life can help you deal with change and just go, oh, yeah, it's happening again. I'm just going to move forward. Change can be a good thing. Uh, even a bad change, something we might call a bad change, uh, could be a good one because it could end up, end us, I'll end us, take us to a place where we'd end up being happier, being more aware of ourselves and what our needs are. And we can learn so much if we can look at change from a more positive perspective. And we have to accept it in order to do that. If we're resisting it, that's when we're not accepting, of course, and we won't be able to work through things. When we have a change, frequently we're releasing things we no longer need. They aren't good for us anymore. Um, we can start to let go of maybe habitual reactions, you know, that fear-based thought that comes up anytime something happens and we think, oh, here we go again. We can just kind of step back from that. So we learn more about ourselves. So instead of resisting the change, just accept it. Just say, hmm, it's taking me exactly where I need to go so that I can create the best life I want to have. Change is a given. It's something that you will never stop. So we might as well just go, okay, here it is and accept it. So that's actually a little simple coaching tip today. It's a matter of just shifting a little bit of our mindset to recognize that change is always going to happen. Now you can reach me at psychicmediumcolleen.com as well as on Facebook, Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Self-Empowerment Coach. Now we will move on to our first caller, who is Venetia from Montana. Venetia, how are you today? I'm fine. Hi, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. How can I help you today? Oh my, uh, well, I, I don't have anything in particular. I guess maybe okay. just let the source uh, tell us what it wants me to know. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Because sometimes people call in, they have a specific thing they want to talk about. And then if I don't touch on it, they get all, you know, irritated. Uh, no, 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 it's all good. Okay, good. Well, I have to tell you, I'm going to touch in with the other side because I do feel a spirit here. And he actually feels very fatherly to me. So I don't know if your dad's on the other side, but he's got a fatherly yeah. vibration about him. Not yet. Okay, we don't want to put him over early. So, you know, look for somebody who's like a dad. Could be a grandfather. Who knows? But I've got somebody who feels <laughs> like a dad to me. And the way he's coming through, it's somebody who... Um, would have been here for people, would have taken care of them. He's also giving me the impression that there's some physical issues be he experiences before he passes. So I am feeling stuff in my chest area. I'm also feeling stuff in my lower part of my stomach as well, which sometimes comes in if somebody has a serious illness. I'll just feel it there. Um, he okay. seems to have quite an interesting personality, let me tell you. Um, he gives me the impression of somebody who's 
Oh, now this is interesting. Okay, here's a weird thing. Um, This person is quite aware of their hair. (laughs) I love random things. Um, They're quite aware of their hair. So either they had really beautiful hair, loved their hair, or they lost it, or there's some significance to hair. A very (laughs) random thing here. That is so Uh random. Yeah, just remember I said it because it may help us identify. Um, Did you have somebody that you know of? who would have been a protector kind of person who would have been there for others, who would have had a possible heart attack or lung issue and maybe another illness on top of it? Well, I just lost my mother, um, but I'm thinking of maybe my grandfather. Okay. Would it have been her father by any chance? Exactly. Okay. Because sometimes that will happen. It's interesting. The, um, the, a parent of whoever just passed might come in or something like that. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you know much about Mm -hmm. him as a person, who he was and all of that? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And was he that kind of person who's a bit of a protector, wants to make sure everybody's doing well? And, you know, um, it's interesting since I've started mediumship work. Well, it's been a while that I've been doing it. um, I'm always surprised when I get somebody who's um, like that because not all of them are, not all the parents are. Uh, So it's nice when I get one like that. He's fun. Um, There's a a good vibration with him. Would you happen to have any of his books still? Are there any of his books here um, in the physical now? Yes. Okay. There's there's a mention of books. There's some in the family. I don't know if I have any particular myself. Okay, that's okay. There's a mention of books. There's a feeling that comes with that as well of um, acknowledging um, he, he's a smart man. He likes knowing mm-hmm. things, learning things. He's got good common sense as well. Um, he's not somebody who would brag about himself, how smart he is or anything like that. Um, he's very humble mm-hmm. in that way. Um, but there's, it's almost a natural intelligence that's there with him. Uh, he understands how things work. And he's somebody that guides other people. When he was here, he was a guide, like a mentor, uh, teaching people how to mm-hmm. live. He wants to talk about you right now, actually, because he's telling me that you're... Uh, <laughs> You're a strong person, and you're a lot stronger mm-hmm. than you think you are. Oh, <laughs> and I know there's been, you know, there's been some times where you've thought, oh, I don't know. And he's yeah. telling me you're a lot stronger than you think you are. He's not telling me that doesn't mean something's going to happen and you need to worry, okay? Right, <laughs> he's just telling right, me about right. the Okay? Uh-huh. Sometimes people read into things. So as he's talking you know. about that, he's also giving me the impression, too, that you're somebody who can uh, keep things under control yourself, keep th- things organized, and that you're also a lot <laughs> like him in the way you are with other people, trying to make sure they're doing okay as well. Are you somebody who looks after other people as well, making sure things are going well for them? Somewhat, somewhat. somewhat I have an older okay. sister, and she's kind of like her thing. <laughs> but That's I, her thing? <laughs> I, I'm learning from her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? But you have a, such a good way with people of making sure that they they mm-hmm. understand you, you support them, you're there for them, that kind of thing as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. And Definitely. He, he's very proud of you for that because he's talking mm-hmm. about the relationships you've made with people here and mm-hmm. how you've helped them. He gives me the impression you did help your mom before she passes. Were you helping to take care of her, take care of some of her details yes. and things like this? We- Yes, we were. We were taking care of her physically. Okay, because there seems to be a lot of that going on. But you know, you're so reassuring that you, he's giving me the impression you really helped her feel comfortable, you know, as best Mm -hmm. you could. You know, given the circumstances, Mm -hmm. you helped her feel comfortable and you helped her feel like you tried to make things as normal as possible, even in an abnormal situation. And that gave her a sense of security where she felt good, you know, it, it also helped mm-hmm. her not uh, worry so much about you, you know, and mm-hmm. your sister apparently too. It helped her <laughs> that way because of the natural uh-huh. tendency is for that. And there is that feeling of um, gratitude from him for you having taken care of her so well and having been mm-hmm. there and made her comfortable. And that's important to acknowledge with him. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I am seeing one more thing, and I don't know if this is going to make sense, but we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I had to get a lot of water. I am seeing a piano. Does someone play the piano? Oh, yes, my mom. That was her life. She's known as the first lady of jazz here in Missoula, Montana. 
<laughs> really? How cool is that? Yeah. And oh, we okay. just went awesome. to see her piano in its new home and have it had it played the other night. Just last night, as a matter of uh-huh. fact. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. So that must be a good acknowledgement then to just let you yeah. know they're well aware of what's happening. Um, no. And that it's, I don't know, it just, it feels like, I don't even know, I, I've got so much love coming through, but there's that love with the uh-huh. piano too. And that, it oh, must yeah. be this too, the, the feeling of knowing someone else is going to the piano. Yeah, mm-hmm. she must be stepping in now too. Somebody else loving the piano uh-huh. as much as she did. And that's, it, there's a, uh, I, I don't know what the word I want. I'm just doing a big smile. It's like pride. There's a pride <laughs> with that and a feeling mm-hmm. of um, it's a cycle. You know, our instruments mm-hmm. get passed on to other people who get to experience them mm-hmm. as well. And the energy mm-hmm. of your mom, of course, is still on the piano. So that's going to help the exactly. person who has the piano too. I mean, isn't that yeah. awesome? That is so beautiful. It, it went that to is the brand so new uh, School of Performing Arts here in Missoula. Under, ah. under her name so yeah that's oh, wonderful oh that's so wonderful mm-hmm. that is absolutely wonderful I'm sure they very much appreciated that yeah. <laughs> yeah, beautiful gift <laughs> for them <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And there's so much love coming in for you. So I want to make sure I just acknowledge that. And I want to give you a big kiss all of a sudden. So I'm sending Aww. you a big kiss from her too. Okay. <laughs> so, Thank well, Venetia, it was so nice talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry well, to hear about your mom nice passing. You. Lots That's of love. Awesome. Lots yeah. of love. You have a good, good night now. Thank you so much and take care. Have a wonderful holiday. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. And that was Venetia from Montana. And now we're going to move on to Angela from Australia. Angela, how are you today? Hello, hello. I'm really well. How are you? I'm doing very well. Well, you sound like you're doing very well. That was an enthusiastic I hello. Am, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And how can I'm I so help you today? <laughs> yeah, um, you never know. Okay, right? so I would love to know more about um, health family, finances, I'm sure all the things that people ask you about. So whatever comes up. Whatever comes up. Okay. Now, the interesting thing, as soon as you said finances, I could feel a little twinge in my stomach. Um, and when I get a twinge in my stomach, that usually means there's something I need to look at there. Um, I understand you're actually quite good with your money. Are you quite good with your money? Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, I've been very okay. lucky with my money. It's more luck <laughs> than... than um, <laughs> Okay, so this is what I'm feeling. I'm going to describe it out a little bit further because I feel like you know how to handle your money. I feel like um, I don't feel you wasting it, like to the point where I go, whoa, what are you doing? Um, I don't feel that, okay? So I feel like you understand how to do money. It's good you've been lucky with money. I do want to know, though, right now, is there somebody who gambles? Uh, Yes. Okay, who is that person? (laughs) Say that again. Your husband? husband. Okay. Okay. Because all of a sudden I was feeling some gambling. Now, I don't want to get into personal things, you know, too much here on the air. Um, But since that came up, that is a little bit of a uh, something to acknowledge, I guess we'll just say. So if that's an issue, I don't know if it is or not, but it cut tied in with the money, of course. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So you never know. Um, So that does come in as well. And I do understand too, do you tend to get a little bit worked up in your head when something doesn't go well? You start worrying and thinking and and thinking. I created it bigger than what it is. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> okay. I was going to call use the word catastrophizing, where we do make something bigger than it is. And something will yeah. happen and you just, you'll go right into it and you'll just start going. And there's such a sense about you of, it takes you a little bit of time to calm yourself down. And you, because you can really work yourself up into a bit of a tizzy there. So that's yeah. something you might want to check into as well to just see if you can just take, take a step back because you'll notice mm-hmm. as you're going through life, things always happen and we just kind of have to deal with them, yeah. you know? So it's a matter of just stepping back. Now, I also want to know, does someone have a health concern that involves their um, the stomach or intestines or anything like this? Does somebody have uh, intolerance to food or something that very much bothers their stomach? Uh, yes, my daughter. Okay. And is it in t- an intolerance to something or is it a yes. few things? Well, it is an intolerance, yeah. Okay. Because all of a sudden I'm feeling that. And... <laughs> 
Yeah, she can be pretty good about avoiding the food, but every now and then she doesn't do it. Is she not good about this? Keep watching what she's eating? Um, on and off, she, she can be pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Okay, because I, I feel like she's she eats really well, and then she'll say, "Well, I feel better, so I'm going to try this," and then she ends up getting sick again, and it takes time to get it going again. And yeah. I'm feeling that when she does this, um, it it's actually aggravating everything again, and yep. it's taking longer right. and longer for her to recover every time it happens. So I don't know if she's going to listen to me. I don't know if she listens to you, but you can try. (laughs) She needs to stop doing that. (laughs) She needs to um, just not eat it at all because I can feel like nausea and all sorts of things happening. And it it actually makes me feel quite uncomfortable. And it makes me wonder um, about long-term damage that could be done, you know? So that is a concern for me, um, for her. And along with that comes the feeling she can be a little stubborn too, can't she? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, she's not much of one for listening to other people, so good luck trying to help there. But um, she kind of does her own thing. There's a bit of stubbornness with her. And interesting, I talked about piano with the last person. Now I'm seeing a guitar. Do, uh, is there a connection to a guitar in your family somewhere? Not at all, no. Okay, I don't know what... (laughs) <laughs> which is fine, believe me. Um, but I'm seeing a guitar, so I'm just going to keep going with it for a minute because it may pop up later. You may find somebody okay. or maybe connected to your daughter since I was just talking to her too, um, uh, you know, because I had her going in my head. So there's a guitar. I feel like I'm out and about and watching, um, you know, like a band playing someplace or some kind of a concert, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. I'm seeing that. Yeah. Um, and, do you happen to know if she does those things, goes to out to bands and things like that? Um, not so much now, perhaps when she was a bit younger, yeah. Okay. Okay. So there's probably a connection there. Ask her about it and see what she thinks. Um, so there's okay. something with that as well. Um, and now <laughs> I want to go back to the finances and I want to go back to the gambling uh, for some yeah. reason. Um, and that again is since it's coming back into my awareness, I don't pay attention to what I've said previously. So it's interesting. I'm going back, um, because it's come back into my awareness. I'm assuming that there might be a concern there. Are you concerned about the gambling? Um, I think it's relatively manageable, but it's because I, we have discussions about boundaries and, you know, how often we can go, what's the limit and that sort of stuff. Okay, so you're aware that there might be a tendency to overdo um, with that. Okay. Um, Okay, I don't want to be spilling secrets or anything, but um, keep your eye out there um, because I'm feeling like there's... Um, how can I put this? Um, a bet on the side, shall we say? Uh, so, okay. um, and and the I, perception it, is it's it, no big it, deal it, because it. it's just a. Okay, yeah, you know, I don't know if that's a bad thing to tell you that or not, but um, I just yeah, yeah. and it doesn't feel like I'm getting a lot of money with it, but it's the hiding of it that concerns me more because yeah. I don't feel like it's a lot of money yeah. or anything like that, and it's the feeling of oh well, it's just this much, it's no big deal. You know, that kind of feeling. So there is a little concern with that as well. I also want to talk about drinking. Who's the drinker? We don't actually have a drinker in the family. Okay, because I'm seeing some drinking. Okay. Um, Okay. Again, remember I said that there's a connection somewhere. I just don't know what it is. So there's somebody who's a bit of a drinker as well. Um, And since I was talking about your husband, it might be connected there. Oh, this is going to be fun. We're all over the place today. It's kind of cool. He, he drinks copious he, amounts of coke. That's pretty much what he is in. Okay, which is fine, but not very good for you. Um, but I, yeah. I'm feeling alcohol, and it may be connected to yeah. him, so someone he knows or something. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Did he have an alcoholic in his family or a heavy drinker in his family? Do you know? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Very, we're all very moderate drinkers, if at all, okay. to be honest. Okay, if I had more time, I'd, I'd find out where this was because I want to know where it is. So I'm just okay. going to go to find out why okay. I'm getting it. Um, but it is an yep. awareness of making sure we're, we're on top of the amounts of things that drinking. So if, if sure. it comes up, you know, in relation to someone, just be aware I said that um, because okay. it seems to be that this is also a little bit of a surprise 
for people. So okay. I, you know, like we don't realize someone is drinking as much as they are. So if it is related to you, yeah. it's hidden, that kind of thing. We'll see. Um, okay. I only have a couple minutes left. Um, so I'll have to start wrapping up. Um, I am seeing one more thing that's kind of random. I love my random things tonight. I'm seeing a bunch of animals. Uh, do you have a lot of animals around you or something? Do you live in the country um, or no, something? No, we have one dog only. That is it. Okay. Okay. So I'm seeing a bunch of animals. So that's interesting too. Don't know where that's heading me. Oh man, I could do like a half hour with you and find out where all these things go. But I am seeing animals. So I'm just going <laughs> to just leave it out there okay. at that. Um, and okay. Uh-huh. Okay. And one more thing, and then I'll probably let you go. I have the feeling of a piece of jewelry having been lost. Did someone lose some a piece of jewelry? Um, no, no. Maybe someone's about to lose it. Lose a piece of jewelry. I hope not. Well, I don't want to. No. We don't want to put it out there and make it happen. That's for sure. Yeah, but there's true, a feeling true, of a lost. No, we don't want piece that at all. <laughs> Yes, yeah. don't put it out there. But there is a feeling of lost joy. So check also with like um, people you have on the other side. Um, go through some of the history of some of those things and see if these things, I may have a spirit trying to come through and that's what's going on. Um, and so, um, and think about some of those, connect them with yourself or your husband as well. So those ones that we weren't so mm-hmm. sure of and see. Thank so you. that was so interesting, kind of fun. Well, Angela, thank, thank you, you so much. much. It was so nice talking to you. That was a lot of interesting information. Information, so kind of cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a fabulous You're welcome. Evening. You have a good night. All right. And thank you. You Peace. too. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And that was Angela from Australia. And so interesting. I do wonder if I might have had a spirit coming in that wanted to talk to her and was throwing out all those things. It'll be fun to see if she can figure out what some of that stuff was. I tell you, when spirit comes in, they will tell you whatever they want to tell you just to get your attention and let you know they're still here and they're still around you. And just like with Venetia and her mom passing and then the message with the piano was so cool. Now this week, I want you to remember Because we are in the holiday season now, and sometimes the holiday season can be a little tough for people. You know, if we've had losses or we have problems going on, you know, real life doesn't stop just because Christmas and New Year's are coming. So if you happen to have some changes, things are coming up and you're starting to uh, get into this, just just relax into it. Now, I do want to thank you for watching, and you can connect with me at PsychicMediumColleen.com. You have a great week, and I I will talk to you next week. Goodbye.